Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. In today's video, I'm going to be trying out a bunch of new products, which is gonna be super fun. I know my videos really help to unwind you guys, soothe your anxieties, and just have a little bit of a calming moment, and I absolutely love that, but I do have this beautiful platform and I'm going to be using it. I have provided a bunch of links in the description, and by the time that this video goes live, there probably are new ways to help, so I will have updated versions of all those links in the description. Whether you can provide financially, even if it's a small donation, that will go a very long way. Or if you're unable to support uh, financially, please sign whatever you can, text what you can. I have this beautiful platform filled with beautiful people that I love so, so much, and I need to use my platform. I will never stay silent with these types of things. It is such a heartbreaking, uh, maddening time right now, and we just need to be on the good side of history. I know there are creators who are going to be taking a moment off of social media, but my gut is telling me that this is the right thing to do. That is what's on my heart, and I will continue raising awareness, and I am going to continue posting because I know my videos provide you guys a lot of peace and self-care is still so so important in these times even more important you need to have those de-stressors in your life so that is what I'm going to be doing. So before we get into today's video, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It would mean so much to me and let's get to it. So I'm starting with my moisturizer, eye cream, and SPF already down. And for my primer, I'm going to be trying out this one from Guerlain. It's the Law Primer. It is a Radiance Concentrate with Pure Gold Makeup Base. I've had this sitting in my collection for a while and I realized I've never tried it or used it before. It looks very bougie. There there is some gold flakes in it, which looks really fun, but does absolutely nothing for your face. It smells like a fragranced hand sanitizer that you could find at Bath & Body Works. It feels maybe hydrating, but I don't know if that's just the moisturizer I already have on my skin. I think this is just a product that looks really fun in the bottle. Like this is the most luxurious fun looking thing to have on a desk, but we'll see. I did want to put on this lip balm. This is the Huda Beauty Seductress Sparkly Lip Balm. When I first received these, I thought they were lipsticks and I was like, for sure, this is not going to be something for me, but the packaging is so stunning to look at. I don't know if it's reflecting on camera, but it reflects like a holographic film on top of it. It's really cool. And then when you open it, it's the most stunning thing to look at. So I'm just going to apply this one. It looks like a nice peachy shade. Yeah, it's very see-through. There's like no pigment to it at all. It's just pretty. And there's like scattered glitter on my lip. I don't see myself really using this, but it's so pretty to look at. I guess that's the theme of today's video so far. Things that are pretty to look at, but are unpractical. <laughs> so now for my base, I have this First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Tinted Moisturizer. I didn't know they had this, but I received this in PR, I think last week, and it has broad spectrum SPF 30 in it, which is really nice. And it says that it has a natural luminous finish, safe for sensitive skin. So we'll see, I have the shade Light. I don't know if it's gonna match me. I'm gonna apply it with a brush. My favorite here, the Royal Lang Knuckle Complexion Brush. And we shall see. I feel like that's actually gonna be a good color. It's nice, I'm gonna double up on SPF today. Also, something that I'm looking for, and I just wanted to ask you guys if you had any suggestions. I'm looking for like an everyday body moisturizer that has SPF in it. My mom has one that she really likes. I might order that up, but I just want to see all my options, you know? I'm going to see if I can build it up in certain areas, but it does have a little bit of coverage, but it's a very light amount. That actually looks pretty good. I'm just going to go over everything with my beauty blender. Mmm, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. It looks good from afar. Like when I was blending it out, I was like, hey, this is looking really nice. But now that I'm looking at it up close, it's looking really gross. <laughs> but see right here, it's looking really, really bad. Kind of everywhere it looks like that. It looks separated and it also looks like it is enhancing some of my skin texture. But we'll see if it settles. I doubt it. I always struggle at this point. I'm like, do I take it all off? because I feel like it's gonna affect how every other product I try out today is gonna look. Or do I continue and then just have a really bad first impression? 
I don't know. I'll try the concealer, see how it settles. That will give enough time to see if it does any settling. For my concealer, I'm gonna be using this one from NYX, the Can't Stop, Won't Stop. I don't think I've ever tried this, and if I have, I don't remember. So I'm just gonna be trying this again. I have two shades here, Soft Beige and Natural. I feel like this one will be a better match. It looks a little bit more deep and a little bit more golden. That's the shade Natural. And I'm just going to put a few dots of this underneath the eye. I'm just gonna blend this out with my Beauty Blender as always. Ooh, that looks honestly really bad under my eyes. It just looks like chalk and it's really tightening up my skin under there. It's not the worst, but it's not something I'd wear ever. You can see like it has like a line of demarcation that it doesn't blend well into the base and it just looks very makeup y if that makes sense. It looks like it's sitting on top of the skin in a very unflattering way. Like it looks kind of good on camera, but in person it's really not good. It looks like I have a sheet of dry skin on top of my whole face, which is not reality. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe this off and come back with a base that I actually like just so we save a little bit more time and we can try out these other goodies. I'm back with the base that I actually like. So I still use the Garland Lore Primer to, just to test it out today. And I paired it with the L'Essentiel Foundation from Guerlain just to see how these two products react together. And also because I just know this foundation so well and I already know and love it. So I feel like it will give us a good representation of what the other products are gonna do to it. And for my concealer, I use the Kosas Concealer in the shade four. And I also set it a touch with the Veil Translucent Powder from Hourglass. So now that we're all caught up, I'm going to be trying this brow pencil from Milk. It is their Kush Triple Brow Pen, and I have the shade Dutch. So this is a very interesting product. I've never tried anything like it. It has three little comby type things. It looks like a little fork for mice and it creates like these organic little brow hair strokes. I'm just gonna test it on the back of my hand just to see what like kind of pressure I should use. So it creates these types of lines, which is interesting. I'm just gonna try it out on without penciling my brows first. Usually I would pencil in, but I just wanna see what effect this will create. And I feel like I would use this mostly in the front of my brow. So I'm just gonna focus with this in the front so we can see. It's kind of a tricky product to like know what you're doing. Oh, I see, I see, I see. It immediately looks like my brows are thicker, which is kind of cool. It's a very sheer product. It does make the front of my brow look a little bit more bushy. And that's what I like to do with the products like the Glossier Brow Flick or the MAC one like that. So that's kind of fun and promising. So I'm just gonna use this through the front and I'll probably still pencil in and put some brow gel in my brows. And I don't wanna strip you guys of a brow intermission. So I will continue doing the rest of the brows off camera, but just so you guys know what I'm gonna be using, I'm using the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the shade Granite, as well as the M Cosmetics Brow Cream in the shade Ebony. Okay, so the brows are on and I'm actually quite impressed with what that brow product did. I am looking forward to using it again. Now let's move on to bronzer and I'm finally getting around to using this Ilia bronzer. This is in the shade Drawn In. It's the Nightlight Bronzing Powder. I also received a new bronzer today from MAC. They have this new bronzing inspired collection that looks really stunning. I might use a few of their products in here, but they also launched a beautiful bronzer, but I've been putting this one off for so long, so I'm gonna try this one out today, but I wanna dive into the MAC products hopefully later. So I'm just gonna be using my favorite bronzer brush. This is the Airbrush Precision Foundation Brush from Sephora. I linked the new packaged one in the description where I have my favorite brushes, just in case if you're curious. I'm gonna try this out. I'm just gonna quickly bronze up the skin. Nice color. This bronzer is really nice. I really like the formulation. It's very soft and it applies very nicely. Let's see if it builds up a little bit. Yeah, it totally does. It's a very light toned, very minimal bronzing look, but I don't mind that at all. 
I like that for lighter makeup days, so this is really nice. And now for my blush, I have this really interesting one. It's from Illamasqua. I haven't tried much from Illamasqua, but this is really interesting. It's kind of super messy in the cap and it gets kind of everywhere. I've never used this before and it's already a disaster. So that kind of turns me off of this already, but it's really interesting because it's like a little jello consistency in there. I don't want to be messy. So I'm just going to take this 777 brush from Melt Cosmetics. Dip easy, my friends, because I just picked up half of the container. I'm just going to wipe some off on the back of my hand. It feels really nice and cold, which is a fun sensation. It's actually like surprisingly kind of a matte formulation on the skin. I was expecting it to have a lot more of a glow to it. That looks really nice and soft on the cheeks. It almost looks like a powder blush, which is really nice. And it was really easy to blend out as well. I didn't have any issues with that. And it's a really cute color. It's very light. Like I usually would go for something a little bit more intense, but this is like a really nice everyday go to light toned peach. Now for highlighter, I have another one from Illamasqua and this is the Beyond Powder Highlighter in the shade OMG. It has a really pretty effect in the pan. I don't know if it's gonna pick up on camera, but it looks like a little pillow. I did swatch it before just to see what the color looks like because it looks pure white, but then when the light hits it, it has a really nice soft gold to it. So it might, might be fun. It doesn't look like it has any chunky glitter whatsoever. I'm gonna be using this brush, the Royal Langnickel Balm 38 Complexion Brush. I like to use this as highlight for highlighter sometimes. So I'm gonna pick some of this up. Let's go for it. Whoa, okay, super intense. I don't know about it. Big no from me, it looks really not cute. Let me zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm talking about. It's super accentuating, like look at this. I didn't know I had that. Where'd that come from? What is that? But now I'm aware of it, thanks to this highlighter. It looks like pure chalk, so unflattering. This came in the MAC collection. It's a bronze light fix plus and it looks really exciting. It has really pretty bronzy shimmer in there. Look how fun that is to look at. I'm gonna spritz this all over in hopes that it's gonna take that look away. Okay. Mmm, smells so good. I'm just gonna let that sit for a moment. I fan myself with my mirror, and then I'm gonna press everything in with my beauty blender, focusing especially near the highlight, just to hopefully make it look a little bit more skin-like and not so unflattering on me. Okay, that looks a lot better. That looks so much better. So here is the complexion all complete. It's time to move on to the eyes, and I have the Stupid Love Palette from House Labs, which looks really fun. There's this beautiful picture of Madame Gaga on it. And here is the color story. I haven't dipped into any of the shades yet, but here it is. At first I wasn't super in love with the whole tones because it reminds me of the Edmonton Oilers, which I see that color story everywhere I go. And I'm a Flames fan. <laughs> Here's the palette. There's a lot of fun blues, warm tones, cool tones, all of it. We'll see what we can create with it today. I'm really excited. I was not impressed with her first palette she came out with, the Glam Room palette but this looks to be a lot more different. There's a lot more textures in here and the shades look really nice. So we'll see how they perform on the eye themselves. While I'm coming up with a look that I wanna do for my eyes, I just peeked over at this matte collection and there's this product right here. It's a strobe face glaze illuminizer and it's in the shade Let's Make Waves. So this is really enticing to me. It comes in this really cute little bottle here. Is this a product they used to have or something? I have never seen anything like it. So I'm gonna just apply it over top of my highlighter I already have going on since I don't like it that, that much. So this feels like it's just like a gloss for the face. So I'm gonna put some on with my ring finger to begin with. It's not the best. Um, representation of this product yet but I just wanted to layer it up see what it would do to 
to that. It feels similar to the Nudies Glow formulation, but maybe just a little bit more glossy feeling, like a little bit more tacky. I don't know, but that definitely helped the situation a lot. That is a glow that I see myself wearing a lot more often than that powder one we went in with. So I think I'm gonna focus with the blues in this palette. They are so creamy. I was just swatching them and look how pigmented they are, especially these two right here. I'm thinking of doing like a nice ombre eye with those two, I think that'd be really cute. This palette so far, I'm actually getting more and more excited about it as we go on. So I'm first gonna start off with the shade Enigma and I'm gonna blend that into the crease. This is a Royal Langnickel crease brush, by the way. I'm now gonna switch over to a smaller brush with the same shade just to build up that color right here without it getting too out of control. That is quite impressive for that soft of a blue. I think brands struggle with formulating really nice blue shades. Sometimes they're a little bit too chalky and they don't build up properly, but this one seems to be building up very nicely. Or sometimes they just blend out to be a really gross green shade, but so far this one looks really nice for that soft of a blue shade. I'm now gonna take a packing brush and I'm gonna take the shade Peace. This is the prettiest blue. I think this is the shade I'm most excited when I look in this palette. It's the one I get the most excited about. Look at that, that is beautiful. This is a million times better than her last palette. The formulation has improved. The shade is very creamy. This is the stuff I wanna see from her brand. This actually is making me really excited. And I'm just gonna go back to this brush with the same shade, just to start kind of incorporating that into the crease. That is super impactful. That's amazing. Okay, so for the base of the eye, I don't know what I wanna do. I'm gonna press on the orange shade. I was originally gonna stick to these two shades and incorporate them on the lower portion as well, but I kind of feel like it'd be cool to do the orange and then fade it to one of the more neutral shades in the palette, just so I can get a more well-rounded uh, opinion. I'm gonna take the shade Enemy and I'm gonna start applying this to the lower portion of the eye. Kind of in a pressing motion, just so that we get the most out of the pigmentation. And now I'm gonna take this Royal Langnickel smudger brush and I'm gonna dip into the shade My Mind. And I'm gonna finish the lower portion off right here. Oh, it's kind of purpley. I feel like I'm screwing up what I originally had and it's turning out to be something that I don't really like, but at least we're trying out more of the shades. This is a really nice cool tone shade. It's very interesting. It has a lot of purple in it, but at the same time, it's really nice and gray. It's really pretty. Now I'm gonna just go back into Enigma, which was the first shade we went in with, and I'm just gonna blend that harsh edge out. I do have a lot of fallout right here, but I think that might be from the way I was using these shadows since I'm doing a lot of packing motions, but I'm not entirely sure. I feel like I don't really enjoy how this turned out at all anymore. Just, I got excited with the formulation. Okay, so I just went off camera and I came up with something a lot more everyday, more glam appropriate, but at least you got to see what the shadows were capable of and like the tones on my eyes. So they did perform very well. I just hate the look I came up with. So I'm gonna show you how I achieved this guy right here. I'm just gonna go quickly remove this and I'll be right back. First shade I went in with is Plastic Doll, which is the lightest pink in the palette. And I use that as my transitional shade. And then again, I went in with a smaller brush with the same shade just to build that up a bit. And now I took a smaller brush. This is again the Bomb 17 from Royal Ink Nickel. And I dipped into the shade My Mind and I focused on deepening the outer portion of the eye. It looks very intense at first, but then it gets softer. I'll show you. 
I really love this color. And I use this other brush as well, the Royal Lane Nickel Smudger Brush, just to have some precision on the lower lash line. And I'm gonna build that up just a touch more. And then I went in with another blending brush and now I took the shade Stupid Love, which is a beautiful like burgundy shade. And I just blended out the edges and this is what's gonna make it look a lot more soft. And I took that also into the crease a bit just to define the eyes and because the color was really pretty. And I also took that across the lower lash line and with some plastic doll as well, just to soften the innermost corner of the look, just so that it's not so heavy. And then I just redefined the crease with plastic doll to bring that back out to the foreground. And then finally, I dampened a brush and I went into a thousand doves. And that shade, I would recommend you dampening a brush because it doesn't pick up that that much product or it's not as intense as I wanted to. It's a nice topper shade, but this shade on its own is a little less intense than I would like. So I am going to dampen it just so that I can get the most out of the color. And I'm going to be using this Moda SMI shader brush and I'm just going to take some original Fix Plus, not the bronzy one, just so that I don't alter the pigmentation at all. I really like the variety of tones and dimensions there are in the shimmer shades in this palette. It's really nice to see. There's some topper shades, there's some really foiled shades. There's also some satin shades, it's really nice and diverse, which is really fun for an eyeshadow palette of this size, just so that you can get all these types of formulas and textures so it really amps up your look. And as a last layer, while that layer is still kind of tacky, I'm just gonna press on some with my finger just to get the most out of that color. And then for my inner corner highlight, I'm just gonna take the shade Light Up. I'm just gonna refine some of the details, kind of work on the blending. Okay, so now that the shadow's all done, I'm just gonna quickly add some mascara. And the mascaras I'm going to be using are the Marc Jacobs At Lashed Mascara as well as the Glossier Lash Slick. I don't have any new mascaras right now, and this is the one I've been testing out this past week. So I'll do that really quick, and I will be right back. And here's how the eyes turned out. I am really in love with these tones. I rarely play with pink colors, but these are really, really cute. Quite impressed with this palette, not gonna lie. So now let's move on to the lips and then we're finished. So for the lips, I have this really nice lipstick from Ilia. It's in the shade Amber Light. It's their color block lipstick. I've never tried any of their lip products before, but this looks like a really nice tone to pair with this eye look. I'm first gonna line my lips with this Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Pillow Talk Lip Pencil. And now I'm going to fill in the rest with this lip color. It's not my favorite lipstick formula. It felt really nice while I swatched it and it looks like it has a nice glow throughout it, but applying it onto my lips, it feels a little tuggy and a little bit dry and it does accentuate my lip lines a little bit. It definitely isn't awful, but it's not my favorite feeling ever. But the tone with this eye look looks really cute. I am a big fan of that. And I'm gonna add a little bit of gloss. I'm gonna add the Tower 28 in the shade Chili. Well, I guess it's not a shade, it's just the clear lip gloss. Also been testing this out and I'm super excited about it. it has such a nice texture. Here is the look all complete. I think my favorite part about this whole look is definitely the eyes. I really love the tones and how they play with my natural eye color. I think I found a lot of fun products throughout here. I'm now gonna give you my final thoughts about everything. I'm just gonna divide it into the products I see myself using and the products I don't see myself using. This is hilarious. I'm split 50-50. I liked six products and I disliked six products. So I'm gonna start off with the positives. And the first one I want to talk about is the Ilia bronzer. Really excited about this. I think it was a stunning formula. I like the color on myself. It's a really nice everyday kind of bronzer. I see myself using this a lot. I really like how it built up. I really like how it blended out. It didn't look patchy at all. All around, it's a really nice bronzer. So I'm super excited to have this in my collection. 
so I would recommend this. The next product I really enjoyed was the Illamasqua Blush. I don't think I said that when I was using it, but it's the shade Enamor. It is beautiful. It's a really unique product to my collection. I've never tried anything of those jelly type products. I don't think I've ever had anything like that come across my collection, nor was I excited about them, but this, since it's a peachy blush, I really enjoyed it. It felt really nice and cooling on the skin. It blended out beautifully. It's still on there. And it reminded me of the effect of a Glossier Cloud Paint, which is really fun. Those are some of my all-time favorite blushes, as you guys know. So I see myself using this a lot. It's really fun. The only downside is that it's kind of messy. I wish there was like a little stopper. Maybe there was and I took it off when I first received this in PR. This has been sitting in my new products drawer for a, a little bit. The next product is the Fix Plus, the bronze light. Super fun. This saved my makeup earlier. I love Fix Plus. It's one of my favorite OG products that I've always had in my collection and I've never had any of the ones with a little bit of pigment in there. So this is super fun. I'm going to continue testing it out, but I for sure see myself using this like crazy. The next product I see myself using more is this strobe face glaze illuminator from MAC. I tried it alone on this side after I wiped off that eye and it looks really nice and stunning. It feels maybe slightly tacky, but yeah, my hair does kind of stick to it. So I'm gonna continue using it, but the reason why I put it in my positives is that I do see myself using it and I'm excited enough about it that I would recommend it. It will be in my roundup video at the end of the month, but I do see myself continuing using it. And then another product that I really liked was this eyebrow thing from Milk, the Kush Triple Brow Pen. I was really surprised about this. I completely thought it was gonna be a gimmicky product that I wasn't gonna enjoy, but I really was taken back by the effect it did at the front of my brow. It's very subtle, but I do really like that. Uh, because I find it tricky sometimes to create those brow-like strokes right in the front without them becoming too intense, but this is really nice. It adds some volume without being very visibly makeup, if that makes any sense. So I'm excited about this. I think I'm going to incorporate this into my brow routine, see how that goes. It's really nice, really fun, and I think it's quite innovative, and I like how the prongs are separated not equally so it doesn't look man-made once you apply it onto the brow. And lastly, the Stupid Love palette. I see myself using this a lot actually. This was a super fun palette to use today. There's so many possibilities with eye looks in here and I see myself using it a lot. I, I think my favorite shade was this one right here. Uh, just because I don't have any like this nice and a nice formula too. I'm really excited about this palette. It's a complete 180 from the original Glam Room palette. Uh, I really did not like that one, but this one is like a complete different formulation, complete different game. This was really nice. Can't say enough positive things about this, especially with this eye look. I think this is really cute. So that's it for the positives. Now let's get into the not so favorite products of today. This one, first starting off with the Ilia lipstick. It is a really nice color and it looks really nice. I think I'll still keep it in my collection. The only thing I wanted to mention is that it was a little bit more of a dry, tuggy formula, but the color is nice and it feels nice now that I have a gloss on top. So if you're someone who likes this color, but you are also someone who layers your lip products, maybe go ahead. But for me, this is not my favorite uh, lipstick formulation to wear by itself. Another one that I don't really see myself wearing is this Huda Beauty lip balm. As stunning as the packaging and experience is, I just, I don't like the sparse glitter effect on my lips. I, it's not my type of product, I guess. It's not my style. So I, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend these. Next, I would not recommend this Illamasqua Beyond Powder Highlighter. It was beyond texture enhancing. It did not work for me. I had to pull out a few tricks to make it look skin-like again. It accentuated everything, made me aware of texture I didn't know I had. It looks amazing when you swatch it, but sadly, it's just didn't work for my skin. Next, for the Guerlain Law Primer, it was pure rubbing alcohol. Like I said, it felt like I was rubbing hand sanitizer all over my face. This is definitely just a decorative piece. Like, I feel like it could go on my shelf over there and look super cute. Uh, but for the skin, it was too perfumey. I do have a headache right now. It might be from this or might be stress. <laughs> to me, this is not worth your money. I believe this is like $90 Canadian or somewhere close to that 
which is absolutely insane for a base product like this. Probably won't ever put it on my face again, so that's why it's in my no-go pile. The other ones that are an obvious, the things I wiped off at the beginning of this video, the Ultra Repair Tinted Moisturizer. I had such high hopes and I wanted this to work so badly because what an amazing summertime product this would be, but it just did not work. It looked really texture enhancing. It pilled up weird, not pilled up, but it like gathered weird around my lips and on my chin and just looked really separated and weird. I don't know. This is a no-go for me. I might actually try this one more time. Maybe this base did something weird with it. I don't know. Maybe that's what I should have done at the beginning is try it with a, just a moisturizer or some other primer that I know and love. I will try it again, but it did not work for me at all today. And lastly, the Can't Stop Won't Stop concealer from NYX. This was way too drying under my eyes. It looked super matte and it looked very dehydrated and like I was wearing makeup. And those are all things that I don't want in my makeup routine at all. So that's why this one did not work out for me. But those are all the products I tried out today. I'm really excited to try out a few more things. Like I didn't get around to using a lot of the MAC products today, but I will be using these in another video soon because this is really exciting and the packaging is really fun. It's like a wet, effect even the packaging it has like a wet effect really fun so i'm gonna try those out in another video but with that that is all for me today you guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful or relaxing or whatever it may be if you did please give this video a like it would help me out so very much i will make sure to link everything in the description down below as always and i will catch you guys in the next one love you bye